What's going on guys, Gary Amon here, back at it again with a new video. Hope you're doing well, hope you're safe and happy. So in this video is all about this big guy here, the Samyang 35mm or 35-150mm f2, f2.8 for your Sony mirrorless camera. And this is a very, very interesting lens. Let me put it that way. As always, I'm going to divide this video in several sections. The first section will be all about the build quality. The moment when you get this out of the box, you definitely feel the weight of this lens. It comes in at around 1.2 kilograms, which is quite a lot for this lens. But then again, you know, this lens also is like multiple lenses and one big lens. So that is something that you have to keep in mind that this weight of this lens is really something noticeable. With that being said, the build quality of this lens is actually pretty good. It feels really premium, feels really solid. It feels really high quality. We also got some buttons and switches on the lens itself. And also what I really like is this little locking mechanism that will keep it locked at 35 mil because when you're traveling or when you're walking around with it, it might then just stay in the same position. Otherwise it will then just extend in a certain way that you don't really want to. The filter thread and all the other specs you can see here on the screen and because those are the things that you just easily can find. But for me, I just wanted to share with you what the experience is when you attach this to your Sony camera. In this case, my trusty old Sony a7 III. And as you see, it is just really front heavy as well. And it looks kinda, kinda weird, I must say. Not the most attractive lens in the world in terms of build design, but in terms of build quality, it is very solid. I do wish that it has some kind of uh, tripod color, color, color. You know what I mean, right? This tripod mount as well, because when you have it like extended all the way on a tripod, it feels very front heavy. And in this case, if you're not using a very sturdy tripod, it might tilt a little bit uh, down because of the weight. Just keep that in mind when you're using this. Uh, walking around with this lens, I use this for two like serious occasions. One was a, uh, a dinner party and the second a wedding day. And man, you definitely feel this weight of this lens on your hands, on your neck, whatever you have to strap on somewhere, you just feel the weight of this lens. And that makes this lens very uh, purposeful. Does that make any sense? You have to keep in mind what you want to do with this lens, why you want to use this lens, and all those things before you even get this lens. What is your purpose with this lens? What you want to do with it? Because you have to uh, prepare yourself with bringing such a heavy lens. For traveling, I'm pretty sure you can get some really good results with this lens. You get some, you got the 35 all the way up to 150, of course. So you can capture all the things that you need to. But if you're walking around with it for a full day, I don't think you will be very happy with it. But an overall build quality, except for the weight, it is really good. Now for more interesting stuff, that is the image quality. Even though it is a heavy lens, I'm gonna repeat this all over again in this whole video. Even though it is a heavy lens, it also packs a heavy punch in terms of image quality. At F2, we get some, um, some vignetting in the corners, but I do like those vignetting. It's, not, it's very natural, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then from F2, it goes onwards to F2.8. Uh, at 150 mil and there we got a nice um, I would say a nice frame and overall image quality wise I think this looks really great of course you can edit the pictures as much as you want to get even a better result but just straight out of camera it looks great already if we stop down the aperture a little bit we get some sun stars as you see here this, these are just little test results by the way um, I want to share you some photos as well from the dinner party and for the, uh, for the wedding day. But of course, you know, privacy reasons, stuff like that. I'm just going to share with you some, some stuff where you don't see a lot of people in it. And overall, I have to say, image quality wise, really good. Um, the sun flares or sun flare, the flaring that you have, some distortion here and there. Those are things that you can like either like it or not, you can resolve it in post and stuff like that. But in overall, how it just looks, how it feels in terms of image quality for photo, it looks really good. The same applies for video. I think this looks pretty awesome for what you get from the results that I'm getting with this. And I'm very happy and very pleased with it. 
So image quality wise, it is top notch. The third section will be about the autofocus performance. Here things get also a little bit interesting because the autofocus from third party lenses is either a hit or miss. In this case, the autofocus, it is good, but not great. I would say from 10 photos, then eight will be in focus and two will be not in focus. Uh, for both photo and video, it tends to like uh, focus on the wrong thing. If there are multiple persons inside of the frame, it will hunt down something else instead of the person that is standing the closest to you. Sometimes even between, uh, you got like persons facing the faces that way and one face is directly at the camera, it will still focus on the two faces where you see the back of the head. So the one that is straight looking at the camera is not in focus, but the ones that are not looking to the camera, those are in focus. Which is to me really, really strange. I don't know why it happens like that. Uh, maybe because it's a third party lens, I don't know, but somehow I think this is something you have to keep in mind and you have to like refocus a little bit, recomposure, recomposure, recompose your shot. Just do it differently again or take your camera away a little bit and put it on your face again and then it will focus directly again. So it's sometimes a little bit of hit or miss. So in terms of autofocus for both photo and video, uh, with multiple persons at least, it will be a little bit uh, challenging sometimes, but still in overall, I would give it a 80% like percentage uh, where you get a successful hit. But if there's just one person like this in a little studio environment or little between bracket studio, of course, environment it will be just fine for single target single uh, subjects it will be just fine it looks pretty good as well uh, when you zoom in and out it will lock the focus it doesn't lose the focus a little bit so that's really cool really nice to have from 35 to 150 mil i like that how it auto focus like that um, some lenses they you have to refocus again but in this case it just simply works so that's really cool but in overall, I would give this autofocus, as I mentioned before, it is good, but not great uh, type of rating. Anyways, we come to the end of this video, uh, or the overall question here is, do I recommend this lens, yes or no? The answer is yes. I do recommend this lens, but just be aware of two major things, two major things that you need to consider. That is the weight, because you have to, as I mentioned before, you have to Think for yourself what you want to do with this lens. Is this something you want to travel with? Is this something for like professional work? Uh, because the weight will get you in the end somehow. And the second thing is the autofocus. Do you really want to have the best autofocus in the world? Then I would say get yourself a native Sony lens or uh, get yourself maybe the Tamron 35-150. Might be better for with autofocusing. Not sure because I didn't test it that yet. Um, but in general, the Sony native lenses are having better autofocus. So those are the two things uh, that are like the um, negative things about this lens. The positive things about this lens is that it's built really well. It is, um, how you say that, the image quality is really top notch. Autofocus is pretty good. And the price, guys, the price is also really good. You can find this lens below the 1,000 euro or 1,000 US dollars mark, which is pretty awesome because you will get multiple lenses one. But just keep in mind, carrying around with this lens is something you have to think about. All right, that's all for this video, guys. See you in the next one. If you got any questions about this lens, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, good luck.